Hello friends, welcome to my channel Weathercast. Today's topic is homeowner diagrams. A homeowner diagram is a very common way of representing meteorological data and it is used to highlight the importance of waves and especially the atmospheric waves. So typically what you have on these charts or diagram is uh, on the x-axis is the latitude sorry uh, on the x-axis is the longitude and uh, on the y-axis is the time and the contours which are here <clears throat> the green and brown color contours are representative of some meteorological field either the outgoing long wave radiation or velocity potential or precipitation. So the data that is presented here is usually filtered and averaged over latitude. So in this case what we are seeing is the forecast of outgoing long wave radiation from the CFS model which is the climate forecasting system model and uh, it is averaged between 5 south and 5 north in the latitudinal direction and it is plotted as a, uh, a function of longitude and um, time. So longitude is basically covering from one basin and coming back to that basin again. So it is the entire globe. So this is useful because the waves that we talk about, especially the Rossby waves, uh, equatorial Rossby waves which, are, which is represented by ER or Kelvin waves or even the MJO, these waves actually travel east-west or west-east. So that is why it is useful to find out how these waves are traveling uh, when you plot it on a Haumolar chart where you can see that this wave, Kelvin wave which is a blue in color uh, has traveled uh, from around 30 east to uh, 120 west so which is basically Atlantic Basin all the way to Pacific Basin. So it helps in highlighting the role of waves and of course as we know the waves have a very important role to play in atmospheric uh, dynamics where they transfer energy from one place to the other. So uh, as the waves move in the longitudinal direction they uh, transfer energy uh, from one basin to other basin and that is very important for formation of systems like a low pressure system or a cyclone or any depression that we are talking about. Hence uh, the Haumolar chart uh, is very important to find out how these waves are moving around the globe and uh, uh, what is the t frequency of these waves that are moving. For instance in this uh, um, figure you can see that the Madden Julian oscillation which is this particular uh, black color so the black color uh, which is solid line shows the active phase of MJO and this is the passive phase or the inactive phase so this is uh, uh, enhanced convective activity and this is suppressed convective activity so you can see that the MJO was very active uh, in um, the um, uh, Indian Ocean Basin uh, Bay of Bengal especially and uh, that MJO actually the, the wave traveled all the way to Pacific as well. So you can actually get to know how the MJO is behaving uh, uh, with passage of time as well as uh, how is it moving from one basin to the other. And similarly you can also find out the role of these Kelvin wave which is in blue, blue in color and uh, Rossby wave which is red in color. So all these waves since they transfer energy uh, in form of uh, in, uh, heat and momentum so it is very useful to find out where the next low pressure system is going to form and how is it going to form, how uh, um, strong is it going to be because if the Kelvin wave and Rossby waves and MJO are in, this base, are in the same basin around the same time then it is going to produce a very strong system uh, and a classic example of that was the cyclone Amphan, super cyclone Amphan wherein MJO, Kelvin wave and Rossby wave all the three were in the Bay of Bengal basin uh, during the month of May and that triggered a very strong system. So by looking at these homolar diagrams you can actually find out, uh, you can actually look at these four important aspects which is MJO, Kelvin wave, Rossby wave and any other low pressure system and you can get to know what is the status uh, let us say one week ahead of time or two weeks in advance. Um, apart from plotting it uh, in a longitudinal and time uh, axis one can also plot it in a time and latitude so it is not necessary that you want you have to find uh, you have to plot it as a uh, in, uh, along the la longitudinal direction uh, but we plot it around the longitudinal direction because the waves travel from east to west that is why we are plotting it like this 
but if you want to find out a precipitation anomaly or precipitation chart then it is uh, uh, you can plot it in longitude and you may, you can and averaged along the uh, uh, sorry you can plot it in latitude averaged along the longitudinal direction so this will give you how the uh, precipitation is varying along the uh, african subcontinent for instance with with time uh, so which areas are getting more rain compared to uh, the other parts of uh, africa so south Af for instance the southern southern part, part of africa gets more rain during jan and feb and uh, uh, whereas the northern part gets more rain so this is the kind of uh, coincid coinciding with the um, uh, monsoon circulation or the itcz moving north uh, whereas this is itcz moving south so uh, this is the movement of the itcz uh, or the intertropical convergence zone which is very clearly seen in the precipitation chart uh, because the itcz has a north south shift during the monsoon season it shifts north that's why the most of the northern part of africa starting from somalia and above they get a lot of rain during that period so uh, these kind of homola charts clearly show you the uh, seasonal scale pattern of precipitation across different subcontinents as well so hence you can see the importance of this uh, homola diagram and uh, this was introduced by the by a danish uh, scientist uh, uh, of course his name was homoler in 1949 so since then these charts have been used extensively to find out either wave kind of features or uh, plot it uh, or look at precipitation char charts to look at how the precipitation is varying with uh, latitude and uh, uh, months uh, so i said in the beginning that the data has to be filtered so what uh, people do is if they want to uh, so let's say you have a, a one year worth of data a daily averaged uh, one year worth of data then you put a low pass filter and a high pass filter uh, because if you want to find out uh, the effect of uh, uh, waves then if you plot it on a daily basis then what will happen is you will see a lot of noise correct so for instance you see here so this is if you plot the data every day without any filtering then the blue color line is how it is so you will you will see a lot of noise in the data but when you smoothen it out using a, a band pass filter then you will have a filtered data and it will give you much more clearer information that is why filtering is important so you pick a low pass uh, filter high pass filter so 15 to 60 day filtering is what is used for the uh, contour that you are using so here if i am using olr as the contour for this case or here i am using precip precipitable water so anything you can whatever contour you are using you filter it out so 15 to 60 day filtering is basically high pass is 15 low pass is 60 so anything below 15 will not be accounted for and anything above 60 will not be accounted for so that kind of gives you a uh, um, time based filtering where uh, the wave features wave features are usually of the order of uh, 14 days to 40 days right so your uh, kelvin wave uh, moves uh, has a bi-weekly kind of feature so it shows up every 14 or 15 day uh, whereas your MJO shows up every 30 day or 60 day and Ross B wave also has a time stamp of around 30 days or so so that's why you when you filter it out then you actually clearly see the uh, pattern of these waves which won't be seen clearly if you plot it on a daily basis so uh, once again I want to show you that when you plot because the data set is so uh, fine that it will give you a lot of noise right so in order to get rid of the noise and clearly see the uh, importance of these wave features hence we filter it out okay and uh, there is a um, uh, there is there are codes available to filter this data so when you filter it out then this is what you get you get the um, uh, the contours of uh, let's say olr and uh, on on that olr you are plotting you are putting your mjo and kelvin wave and ross b waves uh, together okay so of course this is a much uh, this is a 15 to 60 day filtering whereas this is this is 30 to 90 day filtering so you can clearly see the difference where these are much um, uh, uh, finer features whereas this is much coarser because as you increase the box size or if you increase the filtering size then you will actually uh, lose some of the so you will do a lot of smoothing correct so a lot of smoothing means uh, less amount of resolution whereas here it is more amount of resolution because you are your box is much tighter okay and one thing that i missed is that uh, this is the so you do a time filtering and you also do a wave number based filtering which is in spatial uh, direction of course you are using your fourier transforms for this uh, so because it's in a fourier space is uh, is, is uh, the space in which you filter out things 
so the wave number based filtering uh, is done for uh, in, in terms of wave, wave number modes which is 0 to 5 for MGO and Kelvin and 1 to 10. So this is time which is 15 to 60 and wave numbers so uh, so number of waves that are moving from uh, one region to the other so you filter those out as well and that's how you figure that's how you <clears throat> actually figure out which is an MGO wave which is a Kelvin wave and which is a Rossby wave because as you saw all three of them are actually overlaid on this so you have to kind of re, uh, uh, separate them out okay so it is done using a wave number filtering so first is time filtering to actually get all the waves and then once you get all the waves then you filter it using wave numbers to actually see which wave is it whether it's a MGO wave it is a Kelvin wave or a Ross wave uh, so in order to see the predictions you actually go to this website and you have this Hovmoller uh, as one of the tabs and you can choose anything so velocity potential means the background or the contour plot will be in terms of velocity potential which means either divergence or convergence so green is basically divergence and uh, red is basically convergence so you will you will know uh, how the low pressure systems and high pressure systems are operating uh, uh, at the, this uh, 850 level or 250 level so here uh, here you will have different types of uh, um, uh, the background uh, contour either OLR which is outgoing long wave radiation or velocity potential or precipitation or um, uh, you will uh, you can also have precipitable water anything that you want you can choose then 850 or 200 HPA these are the only two waves low level and upper level those are the only two levels and of course you can choose any latitudinal, uh, latitudinal averaging so either 5 north to 15 north or uh, 5 south to 5 north or 10 to 20 whatever uh, so this will give you this kind of a homolar chart that we have been seeing and on that chart you can start looking for these kind of Kelvin wave signature, equatorial Rossby wave signature, MJO and uh, other type of signatures. Then you can do a prediction of what is going to happen in your specific basin uh, during that period of time. Okay. Uh, so I hope uh, this uh, was useful how to use homolar charts and what do they give and uh, how are these charts plotted filtering is very important aspect which is more mathematical uh, I have just tried to give you the crux of the, how, how filtering is used and how it is used to separate out these waves uh, so uh, um, again I hope this was useful and uh, please subscribe to my channel for regular weather updates uh, and along with the dynamical aspects of it thank you so much and uh, I look forward to your support have a good day bye